Hello and welcome to another tutorial from PH Studios. Last tutorial we discussed moving the skim sprite using the keyboard by using simple commands and using a keyboard state object that will just get the state of the keyboard, what keys are pressed and what keys are not. And then we can test to see individual keys and perform operations if they were pressed or not. So this is the complete code we did last tutorial. We press F5, the spread will be in the center, and we can move it using left, right, up, and down. And you can move two directions at once, up, left and up, with the diagonal. You get the idea. So now, in this tutorial, we're doing the gamepad movement, and this is what the last tutorial that's everything coding here except for the keyboard state or keyboard update region so everything besides that is already coded we did this in the last tutorial so I thought it would save us some time by just deleting that and going from there as you can see we press F5 we cannot move the sprite by using the keyboard or the gamepad now for the gamepad, you have two choices. You can use an Xbox 360 wired controller and just plug that into a USB drive and install the drivers. Or you can use the Xbox 360 wireless controller, but you need the Xbox 360 wireless receiver that will plug into your USB drive. And both of those are available. I think the receiver is about $10, maybe $20 and then the usual price for the Xbox 360 controller. If you have one on the, if you have an Xbox 360, you can just get the receiver and sync the Xbox 360 wireless controller up to your computer. You just need to resync it up to the Xbox 360. If you have a wired controller on the Xbox 360, you can just plug it in directly to the computer. And if you do not have an Xbox 360, you can go out and get an Xbox 360 controller for about 30 bucks for the wireless one. And it's, it's pretty good for games like RPGs and stuff, but not for space shooters where we can use the keyboard easily. And FPS, first person shooters, where it's kind of hard to play on the gamepad, so. You need to decide what game you want to create, if you want to create an RPG or something like that where you can run around a game world with a player, you should get the gamepad. It's a lot easier than using the keyboard for controls when it's not really meant for keyboard. So this is the coding except the keyboard state. So the gamepad state is very similar, but it does have some differences. We do the same thing that we did for the keyboard state, which is just grab a key gamepad state object. And the same thing, gamepad dot get state. Now when you get the state for this, you are required to get the player index. And the player index is which player does this controller belong to? If you have the 360 wireless controller or the 360 controller, you'll know that you're used to the orientation of the green light is your player index. If it's the light is on the top left, you're player number one, and then so on. So you can hook up to four, I think, up to the Xbox 360 wireless, maybe just two for the wireless receiver on Windows. I don't have four controllers to try it out on, so I'm not completely sure. But I'm assuming you can. So you can have four people playing your game at once, you just need to determine, you just need to split that up with the player index at one, player index at two, and so on. Since I only have one, I'm the first player. Now that that is handled, we have additional buttons 
that we're not really used to when we think about the keyboard buttons and the buttons like A, X, Y, and B and the D-pad. We have the triggers, the left trigger and right trigger. Those are behind the bumpers. And then we have the joysticks. Now these are completely different. These are uh, pressure sensitive. So the less you move the buttons down or move the joysticks in a certain direction, the less your game object will move. And these joysticks are vector 2 objects. It will just give you a direction of a vector 2. If you move the joystick completely up, it'll be 0 as the X component and 1 as the Y component because you're moving it up. So the vector goes from negative 1 to 1. Completely left is negative 1, completely right is 1. And in center is 0, 0. So this way it gives us more precision on what we're doing on our game object. We can enable that or disable that if you want. I like the precision because it's better than just pressing left and you get the same speed. It requires a little bit of strategy. Not too much, but gives us a nice amount of cool effects that we can add to it. So since so that's from 0 to 1 or 0 to negative 1, we can just multiply that by a certain amount of speed, which we have added in the last tutorial and we have added that to 10. So now when we check the gamepad state and we do not do if because this is a vector 2 and this is a thumbstick and we want the left one. The right one is underneath the start button next to X and A. So we, I like the left one for movement and the right one for looking around. And that's a vector 2, so we can do x. So let's do position is equal, position at x is equal to gamepad state dot thumbsticks dot left. So let's do plus equals to times speed. Okay, position dot y minus equals gamepad state dot thumbsticks dot left dot y times speed. Why did I do minus equals? Because on the gamepad, when you move the joystick up, the y component of the vector is positive 1. However, when you're moving a sprite up, you're moving it in a negative y direction. Now you can leave it inverted if you want. You're completely optional. It's up to you whether you want the up to move down and the down to move up. I personally hate it when games do that, so let's give this a test out. So you hold the joystick up, it moves up. Hold it down, it moves down, left, and then right. And we have complete control. We could do it in a full circle. We can barely push it up and we get a slow speed. Push it up again, all the way full throttle, we get the full thing. And there you go. That's simply gamepad movement. And also the back